Today I'm going to make a sourdough whole wheat challah. And this bread is so beautiful. It's really tender and really it just shows you how perfectly sourdough and whole wheat really blend and really complement each other by the way they work together during the fermentation process. Let's make the stiff starter that we will need for this sourdough whole wheat challah. So in my bowl, I'm gonna scale it, 80 grams of water. Add the water first because if you add too much, easy to pour it back out. All purpose flour. And this is gonna be 135 grams. I'm gonna add 35 grams of our starter. And now that our starter has been added, we get to mix it together. So this part takes a little extra time than the traditional or not necessarily traditional, but the more common 100% hydration. And when I say 100% hydration, that means there's equal weight of the water to the flour, because your flour is what you're comparing that number to, to, to create our percentage. So if it's equal weight of water to flour, it's 100% hydration. So this is a little bit more than 50% hydrated. Now that it's getting hard to mix, and we're gonna mix the rest by hand. And if you want, you can even turn this out onto your work surface and knead it as a, you would a dough. Get my scraper, make sure the sides of my bowl are nice and clean. Once the starter is fully mixed and you're looking for no dry flour anywhere on your starter, you're going to put it back into your bowl or another container. Here's what it looks like now. So that will take eight to 12 hours to become active. And it will actually stay active a while because there is so much flour added in proportion to the water. So a stiff starter, one of the benefits is that it will stay in that active zone longer once it gets there because there's more food for the microorganisms to eat. So here is the starter after I had set out. This, this starter was created last night around, um, really late. So it's been about 16 hours. And so you can see the difference between just mixed in the active version. So this one is ready to add into our dough. If we're gonna to mix together most of the dough except for the starter, the starter we're going to add later because we're gonna let that whole wheat autolyze. That means that it's gonna become more tender. It has that time with before adding the leavening agent, which is our sourdough starter. Um, it has that time for the water and all the liquids to penetrate into that flour and really help some gluten formation begin happening. This creates a stronger dough and it's really good for whole wheat to have this extra time in um, especially. I'm start with a bowl, a large bowl. I'm gonna put it on our scale. And for this recipe, I do have um, American measurements on the original post if you do not have a scale. But the scale, I, I say it again and again, it really helps with accuracy for bread making. So after I have this on the scale, I'm going to first add the water. I'm using room temperature water, filtered water, so I'm gonna do 100 grams. There are two eggs in this recipe. Some challah use a lot more eggs. I'm just using two in this recipe. We're using extra virgin olive oil in this. 55 grams. Oh, I always wanna get that last bit. Okay, come on. I'm hoping the house feels unnaturally quiet right now. Um, and this is baby napping and my three older kids are out going to the library um, with my husband so we're gonna try to make this mix this dough before they get back I know they're gonna be so excited because they love this bread and it's been a while since I've made it actually all right we have our water our eggs oil now I'm going to add our honey oh. If you don't have honey, then you can use um, 60 grams sugar, white sugar instead. So I'm gonna use 65 grams of our honey. In my opinion, from um, when I've used honey in recipes, it seems like it wouldn't make a difference, but I find that by drizzling the honey around so that it's like in thinner, in thinner ribbons, actually makes it easier to mix later. So eight grams of sea salt. On your salt, you really wanna be accurate. Hard red wheat. So I like to add the liquid ingredients first and then I add the flour last. That way that if there's if I accidentally added too much flour, it's easy for me to take it out while it's still dry on top and put it back. But thankfully, we don't have that problem. We have just the right amount. So I'm going to remove it from our scale and we're gonna to start to mix it. 
In order to get all the flour mixed in, I usually take my, my a spoon or my spatula and I really mix it against the sides of the wall because in this stage, our goal is really to completely hydrate that flour, have no dry flour left. All right, so now that it's almost all mixed, something I really like to, especially for um, whole wheat or recipes that are new, um, is I'm going to actually start mixing this by hand. So I'm gonna take all the extra dough off the spoon. You can see it's not very sticky because there's not much gl gluten development, and that's why it needs the extra help with a longer autolyze, or auto autolyse, I'm always mispronouncing <laughs> that word. This will sit, once I've fully mixed it and there's no dry flour and it feels like all of it has been, is hydrated, that is when it will sit and rest for 30 minutes, even up to two hours I've done. If you ask at this point, well, how do you know whether you need to add more liquid? Because um, in the recipe, I have a note that, you know, if it feels really dry, if you can't get any more flour in there, then add a little more liquid. But you should not see any dry flour. So if you see dry flour, that's when after you've been mixing for about five minutes, and I think it's been about two minutes of me mixing this, um, but there is absolutely no dry flour on here now. Wipe all those pieces off the sides of the bowl so that the sides of your bowl are as clean as possible. Here is our fully mixed whole wheat hollow, sourdough whole wheat hollow dough, but there's actually no sourdough in there yet. No leavening agent at all. No yeast, no sourdough. So um, it's a whole wheat dough right now. I'm going to cover this with plastic wrap so it doesn't get dry. You can use a bowl cover or a lid. And this is gonna sit for 30 minutes to two hours. It's been over 40 minutes, so now we're going to add our starter into our whole wheat dough. So you can see it's, it doesn't really look that much different as far as texture, it feels softer, and I can even see when I squeeze it, I can see some of that gluten development happening where you see it sticking together more. So I'm going to add 200 grams of our starter that's active. And this has a much different smell than 100% hydration starter. It's, um, it's a little bit more acidic. So that's a 177, so a little more. You're gonna use almost the entire amount of starter, but you'll have a little bit left over. So now I have 200 grams of the starter in there. Oh, the sun is coming out. All right, so here is the rest of my starter. You can see there's a little bit left, so you don't have to feel nervous um, about having too little. So I have my starter, my, my scraper on standby, but I'm, I usually just mix this in by hand. And this is the part where this gets very messy. I probably should have taken off my ring. you're going to knead that starter into the hala. So combining, and I feel like there's, there's some really beautiful symbolism in this bread, which is one of the reasons why I prefer even to, one of my most popular recipes is the, my tradition, my regular hala bread that's a sourdough. Um, it's called a fluffiest hala bread, sourdough hala bread. Um, I love that one, but this one I prefer even more because I feel like there's even more symbolism in this bread and it really feels special when you make it because it does take a little more time and effort for the steps, especially if you're using freshly milled whole wheat. All right, so here we can see it's completely changed from that first stage that it was in. What you're looking for for your dough to be fully mixed is, obviously this one is an easy one to see when it, the starter is mixed into the dough fully because it needs to be uniform in color. But we also want to see that the dough is no longer sticking to your bowl or your work surface and that when you touch it, it should ha dimple like this. This shows that it has been mixed enough, the gluten has been activated, and it is ready to rest in that fermentation stage. So we're going to put this in a covered bowl and, or, put, or you can also put it in a, a covered container. And this is going to ferment for two to three hours at room temperature. It's colder here, you can obviously see or guess the month of the year. So I'm gonna err on the side of three hours since it's a little bit colder right now. This one, I don't let it ferment as long as the as my other version that's all white flour because the whole wheat flour, it leaves less food for the microorganisms to, to work through and, and eat and also rise. So the rise time is, is a lot different, it's a lot shorter when using whole wheat flours versus a white flour. To build strength, stretch and fold your dough during the early part of the fermentation process. After the bulk ferment, it's time to divide the dough into four pieces for two medium hala. If you're making only one large hala, you would only divide it into two pieces. I'm dividing the dough visually, but 
It's really good to use weight to make sure they're equal. So um, you might need to adjust your dough if you do it visually, just to make sure they're all about approximately the same size. The shaping for this challah is a little bit unique. First, you're going to lightly flour your work surface. This first example, I went a little bit too heavy, so go light when you flour your work surface. And then you're going to roll each ball of dough into a 5 by 15 inch rectangle. And it'll be larger if you're making one large loaf, but that's how big you want them to make the two medium sized loaves. So once you have that rectangle, you roll up along the long side to make your ropes. Once the dough is rolled up, pinch along the seam and then roll out from the middle and even take the ends of the rope and hit it against the table to really stretch it because you want these ropes to be about 18 inches long after they're shaped. Now that we have our ropes, it's time to braid them. So take two pieces and you're gonna make an X and fold the ends down. Left to right, we have strands one, two, three, four. So take one and put it over two. Bring four under three, but over one. Make sure to tighten the braids as you go so for a nice crisp shape. Strand two goes over four into the middle. And then three goes under one and over two. Four goes over three back into the middle and then one is going to come under two and then over four. And this process is gonna repeat down, repeat this pattern until you get to the very end. And then the ends are gonna be wrapped and folded underneath the dough and stuck into it by pinching. To make sure that your challah are the same approximate shape, it's a good idea to count the rows of braids that you have on each one to make sure that they match. Hold and stretch your challah so they become the same shape and they're more uniform. And now it's time to cover them and proof them. These will proof for four to six hours at room temperature until about double to triple in size. Here I'm doing a little poke test to test the readiness. And now it's time to apply our egg wash and any additional toppings like sesame seeds or poppy seeds to the top of our challah. Then it's time to bake these in a manually steamed oven for 35 to 40 minutes. You also want to use your sourdough starter. It's really important that, that it has been refreshed recently. I prefer for the best rise for this to have been refreshed within the last eight to 16 hours. For the best, strongest starter, you wouldn't want to use full on discard that's been sitting in the fridge for three days or a week or longer because you really want a strong starter that we're gonna build up. To so. know that it's active, you should see some of the similar signs to a 100% a hydration start if you've worked with one of those before um, but what I'm looking for is I want it to be doubled in volume um, this one you can see how doughy and pasty it looks there's no air in there whereas this one has those air pockets it's doubling the volume and we see there's large bubbles in there and also this one is gonna smell like raw flour this one has a nice sweet slightly sour smell those are some of the signs you look for when you're trying to decide whether it's active or not the time allotted is is also a really important indicator so 8 to 12 hours at least, 8 will work in the warmer months, 
but you're gonna go 12 or longer in colder months. So I wanna show you, here's our freshly milled flour. Um, I'm using a mock mill to mill this at home. Um, so if you're using whole wheat from the store, you might have to look at the troubleshooting um, information I put in the post for this recipe because the way that whole wheat absorbs can vary a lot. It can vary based on whether it's freshly milled at home or if it's bought from a store and even what type of wheat berry it is. And there's lots of varieties and also lots of different growing climates and even just how much sun that it receives and the soil can affect how strong or how absorbent the final flower will be when you make your bread. So that's something to keep in mind that you do have to play with it a little more than recipes that are all made with all-purpose flour or bread flour or another white flour. Mm -hmm.